What's up everyone? I'm Mel Negan Tu and in this video, I'll be going over everything you need to know on how to get a SIM card in Bali, Indonesia. Now I've been through this whole process myself, so I'm going to give you all the tips and tricks that I learned during the process to help you save time and money. So let's get it. A SIM card, also known as a subscriber identity module, is basically a tiny little chip that goes into your phone that stores data and allows your phone to connect to a mobile network. Without the right SIM card, some phones would not be able to make calls or connect to internet services. Now first things first, you're going to want to choose a phone carrier. There are a number of different phone carriers in Indonesia and the one that I recommend is Telkomsel because Telkomsel has the widest coverage covering 98% of the country and is said to have the highest internet speeds. Next, you're going to want to register your phone's IMEI. IMEI stands for International Mobile Equipment Identity and it's basically a 15 to 17 digit number that's used to identify mobile devices. As of April 18, Indonesia implemented a new policy that blocks unregistered cell phones. This means that mobile phones purchased abroad will be blocked from accessing local networks in Indonesia. If your phone is valued over 500 US dollars and you plan to stay in Bali for longer than 90 days, you pay the tax on the difference between the total value and the tax-free threshold of 500 US dollars at the customs office at the airport. For example, if your current mobile device costs less than $500, you do not need to pay taxes. However, if your mobile device costs over 500 US dollars and you plan to stay in Indonesia for more than 90 days, foreigners would have to pay 40% of the cost of the phone that exceeds the tax-free exemption of 500 US dollars. So for example, if your phone costs $800, the 40% will be charged from $300, therefore the tax amount would be $120. For those who own a Kitas, the tax amount would be 30% of the cost of the phone exceeding the rate of $500. This is a one-time tax. If you don't want to connect to the local network or register your phone and pay taxes, there are other options available. For one, your phone can still be used with your overseas SIM by connecting to Wi-Fi or using global roaming. Two, buy a cheap phone locally once in Indonesia, which should already have the IMEI registered. And three, for tourists entering Indonesia within 90 days and would like to use a local network, they can visit the official office of the mobile carrier to get access to the local SIM card, which is good for 90 days. Where can you get a SIM card? It's possible to purchase a SIM card at the airport, but I recommend to avoid that if you want to save money because you can end up being overcharged at the airport and pay up to three times the price compared to other places. You can also purchase a SIM card at local roadside kiosks, but since you're probably going to have to set up the SIM card at a Telcom Cell store anyway, I recommend that you just go directly to the official Telcom Cell office and get everything done there to avoid running into any issues. I live in Changgu, so the nearest one that I use is the Telcom Cell Grapari store inside Mall Bali Galleria. The SIM card you want to purchase is the Telcom Cell Tourist Card, which is valid for three months and can be extended without any additional fees for another three months. You just need to come to the same Telcom Cell store in person with your passport and your phone. The tax in that case does not need to be paid. Now that you have a SIM card, you can now add data or top up with a data plan. The best data plan that I recommend is the Combo Sakti plan, which is 14 gigabytes of data for 30 days for only 55,000 Indonesian rupiah, which is equivalent to four US dollars per month. Four dollars per month is a ridiculously good price for all of that data that you're getting. A representative at an official telecom cell store will set up everything for you and you should receive a series of text messages to confirm that the whole process is complete. Afterwards, I recommend that you download the Telcom Cell app on your phone so you can check up on your data usage and conveniently add more data per month directly from your phone. You also have the option to top up on your data at local convenience stores like Indomaret, Alphamart, or Circle K. I personally like to top up using the Telcom Cell app. Since I don't have an Indonesian bank account, I do a WISE transfer to the OVO app, which then transfer money to top up on the Telcom Cell app. If you want to make general phone calls in Indonesia, you can add credit on the Telcom Cell app here. 
All right, so we went over the entire process on how to get a SIM card in Indonesia and I provide you with all the options in order to get started. Now, to wrap everything up in the simplest terms, number one, bring your passport and cell phone to an official Telkomsel store. Number two, purchase the tourist SIM card and top up on your data. And number three is download the Telkomsel app onto your phone. Now, I hope you guys found this information helpful. And if you did, please give this video a like and drop a comment down below if you have any questions. And please subscribe to my channel to see more informational videos like this one. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.